For this Spooktober, I wanted to find a game to truly haunt you all with. But as it turns out, the scariest thing that happened to me was my camera keeling over like the old yeller and dying. So I have to use this. Even scarier was seeing my own channel analytics after posting creative videos, but not about the usual stuff. Oh, you mean the ones that are not about space sims? Yes. Also, fuck you, YouTube. What the hell is the point of the subscribers anymore? Well, on the bright side, at least I'm celebrating 11 years on YouTube, so I guess beating the dead horse is my speciality. So then, Scorn. Developed by Ebb Software, a Serbian developer and published by Kepler Interactive, who, full disclosure, provided me with advanced copy to make this review. Now, as for the game, well... A creepy body horror-like monstrosity. Possibly the most disgusting game I've ever seen. And I love it. Basically, it's a puzzle walking sim-like game with some combat elements. But not to beat around the creepy bush too much, my first playthrough took less than six hours real time while the game reported three hours. And the price? Phew, 40 bucks? Yeah, that's a tough pill for something like this. Yeah, this will immediately turn off some of you. And let me just say, if you're that kind of a degenerate who can't appreciate the finer arts, Well, then go educate yourself, Philistine. But seriously though, yeah, the playtime is gonna be a problem for those of you who want to sink your teeth in something bit more meaty this spooktober. Well then, perhaps I can interest you in this rock instead! <laughs> The selling point of Scorn is its atmosphere and uh, <coughs> immersion and its art style. And everything else is distant, secondary. As they themselves claim, the game's look is heavily inspired by H.R. Giger of Aliens fame and Zitzlaw Bkensky. Yeah, I just butchered that name, sorry. Though, if you know anything about the late great Giger, well, he was a horny fucker and his work was uh, notably more sexual. Scorn, on the other hand, subdues the urge to plaster the walls with boomers performing Kama Sutra at every step. I mean, the game is already like a chihuahua diarrhea. It's a tough sell, even without the sex stuff. Hey, mommy, mommy, I want to play Scorn! Oh, gross, there's horrific, creepy gore! Oh, but no sex stuff! So Yay! <laughs> Overall, the game is more of an interactive art gallery than a game. And yes, I'll go sniff my farts some more after the review's done. But that is Scorn, a highly unique experience that gaming really rarely sees. Due to its looks, it won't be a commercial blast. Hell, you never see a AAA or even AA batteries. Sorry, I mean, developers and publishers take a risk on something like this. Yet it has turned out as one of the most memorable experiences in the last few years. Animations specifically sell the world of Scorn. It's just so creepy. From simple things like doors opening to more uh, complex procedures, especially in the end. It's uncharacteristic for Scorn, a small game, to have these great animations. Ebb Software's first game, and they almost effortlessly beat most of the gaming industry with this attention to detail that you'd not expect. Environments, level design, and art come together to be like a live art gallery. Literally take any of the screenshots and put it up on your wall and your guests will think that you're a sophisticated hipster with a coke habit. And while I'm trying to talk up the game, its length is not the only problem. Sadly, the game has combat. Yes, it has pew pews. Oddly, the combat though reveals the shortcomings and the lack of variety in Scorn a lot. While your first weapon slash tool could be understandably used against enemies, I feel the game only suffers from having occasional enemies to fight, mostly because they don't offer any challenge and rather act as an annoyance. Sure, the AI and their attack patterns and reach is bullshit, and it seems that the combat balancing was never even considered by anyone with two eyeballs. But what I mean is, Scorn works perfectly to immerse you into the world and forcing you to interact with these creepy, disgusting things intimately. While combat, especially shooting at things, distances you from the action. These disgusting takedowns of monsters that happen while using melee tool only showcases how it should be. But a gun? No thanks. Also, speaking of the guns, why? Why do they sound like guns? I know it's uncharacteristic for this Latvian to nitpick totally, right? But seriously, why do shooting with guns actually have blast sound effects? 
These are all bioorganic style things, right? Shouldn't they sound like bodily motions or something? Like, for example, spitting. <laughs> Hell, go look at this old game called Prey. It too had organic style weapons, and they had a little bit more topical sound too. Oh, right, they did that too. Well, I guess Scorn learned from them. But if we're on the topic of sound effects, well, Scorn reminds me a lot of Alien Isolation, for obvious reasons. The game has stellar ambient sound and sound effects to reflect the environment. Scorn, on the other hand, I don't know. Feels like a lot of sound effects are there, but they're just subdued, silenced. Overall, Soundscape feels rather distant, and for an immersive title like this, it just does disservice. I guess I love the creepy look and feel of the Scorn so much that I wanted it to do better with audio. Despite the sounds and music being really nice, if you just don't let it play, it goes unnoticed. Sound should really have played a greater role. And much like Glenn from Spectre Sound Studio says, we listen with our eyes. And I'd like to add, we see with our ears too. When time comes to insert our fingers into contraptions or do anything, when it's not accompanied with good or audible enough sound, it just leaves us unsatisfied, no matter how good the visuals are. This is most true with guns in games, but the same emphasis goes with simple things like, for example, walking. Piff. Puff. <laughs> now, troubles with the game we see today are just the surface remains, however. The development itself is a great big story, which Transhumanist Gamer actually outlined in his fantastic summary, so I'll link it down below. See, after multiple iterations and funding and changing landscapes, Scorn today is very different from what it was at first, and through most of its lifetime, as a matter of fact. Safe to say, Scorn feels like a game that doesn't really know what it wants to be. Is it a survival horror game like Resident Evil, or is it a walking simulator? For a commercial appeal, sadly, the game had to take a route of more established gameplay style, which is why combat is what it is. But even after a decade of thinking, proposing, designing and making the game, what we got today is still something that we have never seen. And that's a great thing. Now as for the story, well, I'm not gonna spoil it, but basically, due to no dialogue or even written anything, you are just left to interpret the meaning of these actions and the game itself on your own. <laughs> As an art piece, I actually appreciate it, though the ending left me, well, it left me rather unsatisfied again. And though it might be on purpose, well, it still is me hanging in the breeze, flapping and contemplating my life choices. Though the true value really is not in the ending, but the journey. It's interesting that if you didn't tell me what this was, Scorn could be easily confused with Alien Franchise. Maybe even be some kind of an unofficial entry into it, but that's the Giger style, isn't it? And that's basically Scorn, more of an art piece than a game, but genuinely fantastic and truly creepy experience. And there's the word, creepy. It's not terror or horror, really. Some mentioned in my first impressions that it could be some sort of body horror, I guess. But the word I keep coming back to is creepy. It's not filled with jump scares or even the dread of some monster lurking around. Hell, even the idea of evil and good is not really present. It's just a creepy experience in a truly disturbing alien world that is just simply not familiar to us. This kind of a horror style is a very rare thing since it's very hard to do and Ebb Software managed to hit it out of the park. As the first game from the studio, it's frankly outstanding result that I expect from a very experienced AAA developers or designers. It'll be interesting to see what they can do next. As for this Halloween, to have something really different, Scorn is a great option to pick up. And that's the game. Now, for a little bit of a change of pace, I'll be making a commentary track for patrons and YouTube members for making this review and my experiences a little bit more. So if you want to hear that, well, there's a chance for you to support my work and hear the behind the scenes stuff, extra thoughts or things that didn't quite make it into this thing. So check the links for the Patreon and the YouTube members uh, down below. For now, just enjoy the Spooktober and I'll see you next time.